Hello guys, welcome to this Elden Ring video on what to do from the very start. As soon as you load in, it's going to give you a choice between all these different characters. If you want to play as a magic based character, a good choice would be Astrologer. But, in this is what I would recommend, if you want to play as a dexterity based or someone who uses swords character, then I would go Samurai. When you get to here, you can do whatever kind of body type, age, name, and appearance that you want. But with the keepsake, I would recommend choosing either the Crimson or Amber Medallion, which increases your max health when equipped from the Talisman menu, or the Golden Seed, which raises your amount of flasks. After, after watching those few cutscenes and going against that boss, which no, you were not intended to win, it drops you into this room. And down here, there's a little bit of a drop that drops you into something called the Cave of Knowledge. If you're just starting, I would definitely recommend going down there, teach you some basic controls, and it'll drop you right back out in this room. Once getting through the Cave of Knowledge, you want to come up here and open this door. This is your first glance at the wonderful world of Limgrave, the first region in Elden Ring. This guy here is your friend. Down here, however, that thing just over my head is not your friend, and is the, is the first real boss you'll encounter in the game. While you don't have to fight him, you can try if you'd like. Although, I would recommend following this path that I'm going to show you and run to the church just behind him. He shouldn't see you if you stay to the left of his little path. And once you run into here, you'll find what is likely your third side of grace. And also this little guy named Kale, who is your friend and can sell you stuff. This is where you can upgrade your weapons, but only slightly. You'll have to make it to the round table hole to upgrade your weapons more than plus three or four. After hitting this grace, the first place you're going to want to run is in the direction that the grace points you. So straight that way. It'd, it'd, be start, it'd be smart to fight a few of the enemies around here just to get a little bit of experience and get your first few runes. Maybe they'll even drop a weapon that you could try and equip later. But. Once you make it through all of them, there will be a big camp with lots of them on the other side. There will also be a site of grace down straight where I'm pointed if you st stick on the left of this camp. It, it's a good idea to go into the camp and try and wipe the camp of all of the enemies and get all the loot that's in there. But what I recommend doing first is coming to this site of grace and sitting down at it. This initiates your meeting with one of the most important characters in the game. Hopefully you accepted Melina's Accord, and now you will be able to level up with her help. Leveling up takes runes, which you get by killing enemies. Also, if you chose your Golden Seed as your keepsake, you're going to want to go to Flasks, and that little circle by the add charge to flask thing tells you that you can upgrade your flasks. How you use your flasks and also how you use your whistle that Melina gave you is by equipping it somewhere in your menu. In equipment you're able to set things to this little bar in the top in the bottom left that you can switch by pressing down on the d-pad 
what I would do with your spectral steed whistle is pressing the options menu, going over to your pouch on the right side of the screen, and equipping it instead of the memory of grace, because the memory of grace isn't too useful. Then, if you hold down either triangle on PlayStation or Y on X, and you press up on the D-pad, it'll call your horse. And double, double X to press to jump, and then if you press O while riding, it'll go fast. It's a good way to get around much faster than just running. This is the point in the game where it's best to just go out and explore using your horse and clearing out as many enemies as you can to get tons of runes. But, once you're either done with that, or you just want to go straight on to the first boss, the first boss that's required, that is, what I would do is call your horse and just start sprinting by pressing either circle or, I'm not actually sure what the Xbox button is, but circle on PlayStation, and just sprint through here. Go past all the enemies, and you should be fine as long as you're not going slow. Once you get up here, on your right, there'll be a golden seed. And you're just going to want to grab that and keep running up here to this side of grace. It's just, it's just up to the north. Don't mind these wolves, they shouldn't be able to hurt you if you're quick enough. Or you can fight them. It's your choice. Once sitting down at this grace, you'll be able to level up if you have extra runes. I would recommend Vigor, Strength, Endurance, or Dexterity if you chose the Samurai build. Otherwise, you would want to look into what kinds of weapons you have in the Equip menu and level up according to that. Right in this shack over here, there's a lady you may want to talk to. If you talk to her three times, which I would recommend doing for all NPCs, they usually have more dialogue than you can get out of the first try, you would, you would have gotten a little spirit jellyfish. You can't quite use this yet unless you've gotten the spirit calling bell from Rani. Rani is found at the first little place that you started at, the Church of Ella by Merchant Kale, but it has to be during night. You fast travel there by opening your map and then clicking on the site of grace. During night, she should be right here. Tell her you can call the spectral steed, and she'll give you a summoning bell, which will allow you to call spirit ashes to help you in battle. She also gives you some wolves. How you can equip those is the same way you did for Torrent's Whistle, except I would do it in a different menu. You could put it here, and then when you hold down triangle and press right on the D-pad in specific areas, including in boss rooms, then you will have three little wolves to fight along your side. One thing I forgot to mention is maps. Maps are all, they make up most of the world, but they can be a burden to find sometimes. The first one in Limgrave is right in the middle of this can. If you cleared it out, you should have found it. But if you chose not to clear it out, I would just run right in here, grab this map, and then you could just run back to this grace and to reset the enemies. One thing you should know is when going and resting at a site of grace, not touching it, but resting at a site of grace, all enemies are reset along with your health and flasks used up. Using flasks is simple enough. Down in the bottom, whichever one you have out, either the flask of Crimson's Tears, which heals your health, or the flask of Cerulean Tears, which heals your FP, which is done to use magic, which you may not be doing quite as much when you're a samurai. You press box to use whatever, or box on PlayStation, which is the left button on the right side. You press that button and it'll heal you, if you have less health, or it'll give you your flash, your uh, FP back. And then resting at the side of grace will reset that. And you'll have whatever number you have set. You can change whatever number you want in the flasks menu. And more and more items found out through the world will upgrade your flasks. 
once you have a map, maybe a little bit of levels, and you're all ready to go, head up this way from that little sh Storm Hill Shack, Grace. Run up this trail this way. And I would go to the left of this this enemy encampment up here. If, if it's during night, you shouldn't, even if it's during night, you shouldn't have too much trouble navigating through here. Your torrent double jump should be able to get past any of them. That little blue thing on the ground makes it so it kicks you right off torrent, but as long as you're holding the O or whatever button it is on Xbox, you should be able to make it to this grace just fine, and no enemy should follow you. I would recommend resting at this grace. And talking to Melina. Whenever you see the little orb by Melina, that's what I want to click it. This tiny gold is light, but now you can see the rays. This is your final chance to level up before going into your first encounter against the first boss in the game. Make sure you have all your flasks leveled up, which you can tell by the little orb by the flasks menu. Press that if you haven't. And once you're ready, just head over this way. There shouldn't be any enemies, enemies blocking your path. And that right there, the first boss room. If you want to summon your, a friend here, it'll give the boss a little bit more health, but he is very helpful in my opinion. Once you get into the fight, just make sure you're dodging a lot using the O button and only hitting when you know you're not going to be hit. It's not good to trade hits with big bosses like you're about to see. And as soon as you get in, I would recommend summoning your wolves. This boss fight is pretty hard for the first boss fight. And although, even if you're leveled up, you might have some trouble with it. So a few tips. When fighting Margaret, you don't want to get too close to the edge because you can very easily fall off. When you choosing the samurai roll, I would double hand your weapon, which is done by pressing the right bumper and triangle at the same time. So to equip either your shield or your bow, it's just pressing on the left D-pad, but then pressing R1 and L, at, or triangle at the same time, will double equip this. And also against Margit, you want to get a couple hits in and then back away using your dodge or something, and let Rogier do a lot of the tanking. If you summon your wolves, they will also do a little bit of damage, but they might die pretty early. So you just want to try and get in a lot of damage early while you have your friends, and then play a little bit more cautious later into the fight. If you find yourself dying a lot, like maybe more than 10 times, I would definitely recommend going back to this grace down here, and then just riding off into the distance, maybe this way, Maybe that way, and just seeing and going what you could find. Maybe killing some enemies, getting some runes, finding little bosses, killing them, and getting runes. And make sure you level up right after you get those runes at the next side of grace you can find. If you're really finding that Margaret is too hard, even after exploring, taking my tips into a cord or whatever, you can also summon some friends. And I would look up a tutorial on how to do that or a tutorial how to beat Marga easier, and then come back to this video after beating him. After beating Marga, you must feel on top of the world, and you owe that to yourself. After resting at the grace that drops right at his spot where he dies, I would definitely accept Melanus Accord to go to the round table hold. And there, you will find a blacksmith that can upgrade your weapons fully, with enough timing, a way to upgrade your spirit tunes, your spirits by tuning, and tons of different NPCs that you can talk to and they can help you throughout your journey. Very well. Let my hand rest upon you for but a moment. After beating Margaret and going to the round table hold, which can be found on your map down here in the bottom left. Uh, make sure you definitely upgrade as much as you can using your runes. I would recommend into Vigor, which is very helpful, which is health, and also Strength and Dexterity, which will upgrade how much you do with your weapons. 
upgrading your weapons straight up is also very viable. You can grab this, Grace, although it's not too far from that one down there. There's not much to that way. But over here, there's a guy here. You there. C come over here, would you? You, you, you I, it's time to the gods. You'll breach the... Very well, but of course. I would tell him, no, I'll use the main gate, because that just gives you the option to do both. If you want, you can open this main gate, but then people with things will immediately shoot at you, so you got to be careful of that. One way is definitely to go through that way, although you got to be really careful. And I will show you the way you, you can do that pretty easily in a second, but the way I would recommend doing it, for starters at least, is to go this way and just follow this path. There's some really annoying birds up here, but there's a grace just on the other side of them. And once you get through there, it shouldn't be too hard. There's a little bit of a maze over there, and you gotta grab um, grab a key to open a door. And there's a little bit of a hard night in one of the rooms, but it shouldn't be too hard with enough tries. And just be careful of guys throwing cocktails at you. Anyways, if you choose to go through the main gate, which is the faster way, you want to run along this right edge, start dodging, and you hear that noise, and there will be three. Okay, usually you don't want to get hit there. Two, three, and then once you run to this little patch of trees, you should be okay. You don't need to dodge anymore. And then when you get up here, there will be some real enemies that you'll need to dodge. And I would heal up if you don't have full health around here. Um, then once you get up these stairs, you gotta be careful about here, cause you'll have to dodge, okay. Yeah, they shoot exploding ballistas at you, which are pretty hard to dodge. But, run through there, get the timing right, and I'll show you what to do on the other side. The best way from this grace to get to the boss in this area is to go this way. Make sure you don't just run right off this cliff and press this lever to get this lift. And once you go up the lift, you'll make it into this little area that, that shouldn't have any enemies. And you should be just fine to just sprint straight through here. There's a little scarab here that'll give you an ash of ore, I believe, if you kill him right there. But it's not required. Just run straight this way, and there will be a grace right here that you can just grab. This is right by the boss arena, and the boss arena is right there. But if you want to have an, a companion similar to Sorcerer Rogier, and also get a free golden seed while you're at it, run this way, and just follow what I do. If I get hit, then just don't do that but part, but come, come grab this golden seed, and then run this direction into this room, and say hi to this little friend in here. Make sure you exhaust her of all her dialogue. And then she'll be able she'll be a summon that she will become a summon sign right by the door at Godric's boss arena. You're gonna have to run back this way because you can't teleport when um you're oh god can't teleport when you're in combat. If you die, that's okay. They'll respawn you right by the grace that's at the door. But... <laughs> but, once you get out here, you should just see this. And when you touch that and call upon her, or you go into the boss fight, you should be all good. Once you go in there, she'll be your friend. I do personally think this boss fight is a little bit easier than Margit, especially since it's a little bit later and you'll be leveled up more. But as long as you are leveled up pretty highly, your vigor is high, and you summon Nefeli Lu and your little dogs, um, there's only a few tips that I think you would really need to know. You definitely need to be dodging the wind attacks, and when he punches his axe into the ground, by dodging into him instead of away from him, and also, at the start of the second phase, right after the cutscene, you want to run straight under his arm that has a dragon on it. 
and you want to wail on him while he's spewing dragon fire over you. But as long as you're leveled up, this fight shouldn't be too hard. And make sure you're using the sheath ability because that does a lot of damage. And by healing your FP, your blue bar up in the top, by doing this with your Cerulean Tears. But then switching back to your Crimson Tears to heal up your health. And I'll see you after the fight. After killing Godric, you'll make it to one of the most beautiful parts of the game, the Urnia. This is basically one massive swamp biome with some land on the sides. And that right there, above my head, is Rhea Lucaria, the big castle and main, it has the main boss of this area, the main two bosses, I guess. So basically, in this game, there's a lot of different regions, but up there uh, is the capital, which is the gateway to the Erd Tree, where if you watched maybe just even a little bit of lore, you would know is where you have to go to get the Elden Ring. And to just even get into the capital, you have to kill two demigods. One was Godric, that you just killed in that castle. And one could be the the um, the sorcerer that resides in Rey Lucaria. There are many demigods that you can kill throughout the game, but I think these two are the easiest. And another video will soon be coming out on how to get to her and give her give you a couple tips on how to take her out and what to do afterwards. But once in Liurnia, you can go to that little church down there. It gives you a sacred tier, which can be used to upgrade your flasks. But also, you will have acquired Godric's Great Rune, which you can activate by going along here, going back into Margaret's Castle, or the, to Stormvale Castle, running along this pathway and once you get up here you can activate the great rune which requires rune arcs but then it gives you plus five stats to each of your attributes which is can be useful in some situations but once you get to Laernia, this is another great opportunity to just run around in there or go back around in limgrave and just explore I just want to say one thing before the video ends real fast. If you made it to the end, truly, thank you. It means a lot to me. I did put a lot of work into this video, although it's not super polished or great. And I know the first half of the video had some terrible audio, and there was some awful white noise in the background, and that will not happen again. I'm sorry if you had to sit through that, but I really hope this helped, and if it did, it would mean a lot if you would just you know, drop a comment down below, I'll come talk to you, maybe drop a like, and even maybe subscribe. Some of my other content is bad, but I, I put a lot of work into this video, and I plan to make some more high-polished videos in the future. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow when I upload another one, hopefully.